close, no, I can't take a loss at all. At all, at all. Let me put you up on game, it ain't all about the fame at all. Uh uh, uh uh. They talking down on my name, trying to put me to shame, that's all. That's all, that's all. Might be in the Hall of Fame, I can be like you lame. To 2000 and bread. Huh. Like we always do about this time, my name is Cornbread Capone. This is Unpopular Honesty, the home of brutal honesty and real hip hop music. You know what I'm saying? I'd like to welcome y'all to a new year. You know what I'm saying? Still in season two of this uh, thing we call Unpopular Honesty. And I uh, got a lot to unpack today, you know what I'm saying? So without any further ado, let's go and get it started, man. Uh, I hate to start off the new year and this show like this, but at Unpopular Honesty and for myself personally, we always give props to real hip hop artists. Uh, right about now, I'd like to say rest in peace to Gangsta Boo, uh, founding member of 3-6 Mafia and a Memphis Queen, you know what I mean? Um, Gangsta Boo, I'ma say this. It was a couple of months ago when there was this TikTok video that I made where it was just basic music takes. Um, and I did a female edition. And within that female edition, I did say that Gangsta Boo deserves more props than she gets. And it's been coming out since her untimely passing that maybe she wasn't as popular as certain female artists have been. But her impact is still there. Her influence is still there. Because out of 3-6 Mafia, she was the only female artist. She released two albums under Hypnotized Minds. I believe she released another album after that. And, you know, done, you know, gangs of features and several mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully her style and what she created can become the template for future female MCs who are coming out. You know what I'm saying? I like to send condolences out to her family and her friends and the remaining members of 3-6 Mafia because I know that this is a blow and this hurts. You know what I mean? So, uh, rest in peace, Lola, man. You know what I'm saying? Long live Lola. You know what I'm saying? Gangsta boo. You know? Um, I, I just hated to start the year off like that. You know what I mean? That, that, that news surprised the shit out of me here and there. You know what I mean? But, uh, we gonna, that music is going to be here forever. You know what I'm saying? She's still going to be remembered. She's still going to be respected and revered as a queen in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just happy that, you know, um, she is getting her flowers. She is getting her respect. Uh, she did get her flowers before she passed, but, you know, she's getting them now too. And that's real. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody who is you know, being respectful and just paying homage, you know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of people right now that's paying homage to her, you know. Um, this year, 2023, actually, August 11th, 2023, hip-hop turns 50 years old. Now, to a lot of youngsters, that might come as a shock. But uh, the culture turns 50 years old this year. There's already plans for a hip hop hall of fame, which I cannot wait. You know, I hope that that really happens. You know what I'm saying? Um, all I can say about the culture is 50 years, man, you know what I'm saying? And, and hip hop still got a lot of fighting to do. Still got some cleaning up to do because there's some shit out here that ain't hip hop. You know what I'm saying? That's claiming to be hip hop. There's some people out here who have accepted 
non-hip-hop people as a part of the culture. You know what I'm saying? And we must get that correct first. But also, we must recognize that, you know, 50 years, um, you know, like I said before, for the people who don't know what they're talking about, you need to learn the history. Because if you don't know the history, you're not going to know where you're going. And that goes for young and old who might not know the history of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So this year we're going to salute hip hop because hip hop turns 50 years old. You know what I mean? So, hey man, and, and we got, you know what I'm saying, hundreds more years in us as far as this culture is concerned. You know what I mean? And which takes me into my next topic of conversation. Nice segue. Uh, it's a lot of people online, in particular TikTok, Facebook, a little bit of Instagram. I'm going to say this, man. If you don't know real hip hop, shut the fuck up talking about it. And I'm going to explain what I mean. See, you got these people who feel like they know hip hop because their favorite rapper is, you know, out now and they like music now as opposed to music, rap music in the past. And, you know, that's how they feel and they, you know, allowed to express their feelings. But at the same time, you know, like I said, if you don't know your history, you're not going to know where you're going. I'm not saying you're supposed to love 80s and 90s rap music. But you're supposed to know about it. You call yourself a hip hop fan and a hip hop listener. You're going to listen to today's music with these half hearted ass remakes that they take from real music in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to tell me that you're going to respect that more as hip hop as opposed to where the record came from. The original artist who put it out in the 90s. Get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to say this. If you don't know real hip hop, if you don't know the history of hip hop, stop fucking talking about hip hop. Because if all you know about is today, all you can tell me about is today. And today ain't shit because none of these people have classic albums. None. Not a one. And while we're talking about classic albums, you know, um, every year on Unpopular Honesty, we always go back, we always think back, especially at the beginning of the year, you know, um, the classic rap albums from 1998 that will be turning 25 years old this year. I've compiled a list of 30 rap albums that will be turning 25 this year. You know what I'm saying? Do or Die, Heads or Tails, Mystical, Ghetto Fabulous, Twister and the Speed Knot Mobsters, Mobstability, Busy Bone, Heaven's Movie, E-40, The Element of Surprise, Method Man, Takao 2000, Judgment Day, Ice Cube, War and Peace, Volume 1, Scarface, My Homies, A Tribe Called Quest, The Love Movement, Exhibit, 40 Days and 40 Nights, Gang Star, Moment of Truth, Black Star, Daz Dillinger, Revenge, Retaliation, and Get Back, Corrupt, Corruption, Zero, very first album, Look at What You Did to Me, turns 25 this year. Devin the Dude, The Dude, Fat Joe, Don Cartagena, The Ghetto Boys, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, C Murder, Life or Death, Buster Rhymes, Extinction Level Event. Tupac, Greatest Hits, Double Album, DMX, Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood, DMX, is Dark and Hell is Hot, 8-Ball, Lost, Red Man, Docs the Name, Goody Mob, Still Standing, Jay-Z, Volume 2, The Hard Knock Life, Outcast, Aquimini, Big Pun, Capital Punishment, and Juvenile, 400 Degrees are all turning 25 years old this year. In addition to that, there's also some classic films that will be turning 25 this year for all the movie heads out there. You know what I mean? Butter, which was also renamed to Never Too Big. Ride, 
which had Malik Yoba, Snoop, Fredro Starr, Blade. Definitely remember going seeing that one in the movies. Caught Up, Enemy of the State, American History X, He Got Game, I Got the Hookup, Rest in Peace, A.J. Johnson, Belly, R.I.P. Louis Rankin, and DMX, and Half Baked. Another classic that I had the pleasure of seeing in the theaters when it came out. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, we're going to remember all those classics. And hopefully, you know, with this year in hip hop, man, we get, we get, have some classics to look forward to. You know, uh, last year, you know, there was, I could put my hand on two classic albums that came out, and that was Lupe Fiasco and Nas. So hopefully this year we have some more, you know what I'm saying, classic hip hop. You know, I don't think there will be a, an abundance of it, you know, because um, already days into the new year, people haven't left that whack ass music in, in 2022 because they're still jamming bullshit. You know what I'm saying? But for those who know what real music is, man, keep that real music playing loud this year. Let's drown out the sounds of this whack shit. You know what I mean? Let's let's you know what I'm saying? Let's let's put real music above this bullshit. You know. And as far as I'm concerned as an artist, you know, what I got planned for the year, um, is very uh, impeccable, impressive uh, degree of releases that I plan on doing. You know, uh, I have a documentary called Bread Demi, where I will finally get to tell my story since this year makes 29 years that I've been making music. So it's time for that story to be told. Um, I wrote a book which will be coming out this year called Days of Way Back, based on the life of myself and my friends from 1995 to the summer of 2000. And it's a hell of a ride because it talks about a lot of things. So you might want to be picking up that book and learning some things about how it went down back in the last five years of the 90s in Beaumont, Texas. Okay. Then we got them films popping off, you know what I'm saying? Cutthroat Texas is my first movie um, directed by Terry Wiggins, you know what I'm saying? Uh, then I have a, another film called In Search of Gas. It's a stoner comedy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we got some other content coming your way too. And then um, on the music side, we got Bread Demick. That'll be out February 10th. We have The Ladies Room, which will follow Bread Demick. Then you have 3 4 Action, which is myself and Dom Dotto. And then you have my follow up to The Difference, which is called Take It How You Want It. And, um, and a gang of music videos on top of that gang of interviews, bunch of content on top of that. No, we're not stopping. Don't plan on quitting. You know what I mean? So uh, you're not going to be able to turn around without seeing or hearing me this year. You know, and of course, Unpopular Honesty continues and, and the return of Flames Radio. I love Flames Radio. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, my outlet to say whatever the fuck it is I want to say and play whatever it is I want to play. So, knowing that, man, you got a lot of good stuff to look forward to as far as cornbread and is concerned. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully, you know, like I said, we can get more people to abandon bullshit music and find out what real music is Maybe rap would be a, in a better place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Well, as 2023 has started, You have certain people who are giving interviews on platforms. And within the midst of telling the truth about themselves and what might have happened in their lives, it comes across to some as distasteful, tacky, out of line, weird. I don't understand that part of the game. It's just some things that shouldn't be said. It's just some things that shouldn't be exposed. And if you feel like doing that, write a book. Put it in a book. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know, man. This whole clock chasing, kiss and tail thing is weird to me. You know, um, if it was meant for the public to know, it would have happened in, in the public eye is what I feel. And if it didn't, then it didn't. And it's not for the public to know. It's just, you know what I'm saying, how I interpret these things. I just don't agree with that, you know. I don't agree with how Things that aren't relative to music becomes news. Because at one point in hip hop, it wasn't like that. The music spoke for itself. The artist would speak on their music in an interview and not speak on nothing else. But it's like now, you can just say things to get a reaction and it keeps your name circulating it keeps people talking about you and that has become the new way of marketing and promoting yourself but i'm still 90s i'm still in that old mind frame i don't have to say shit if i don't want to and, you know, it's not my business to uh, kiss and tell, chase clout, talk about things that aren't relative to the music, if you're an artist. Speaking of artists, this year, you know, um, a lot of people, I've been watching a lot of uh, most anticipated albums of 2023. And a lot of people have been saying the same old cliche stuff. A lot of people have the same artist name on the list. Some of those artists are not rappers, but these people claim them to be rappers. Um, well, with this list that I've devised, we talking about most anticipated rap albums. We're not talking about alternative artists. We're not talking about R&B singers. We're not talking about anything outside of rhythm and poetry. We're talking about hip hop here. So with that being said, I've devised the list of the most anticipated rap albums of 2023. Rhapsody. Since it's been like five years since her last release. Schoolboy Q, TDE. J-Rock, TDE. Big Sean, Eminem, 
T. I. Kill the King. Want to hear that? Logic, College Park. And they say that there's a <clears throat> a new album from Jay Z and Beyonce that is set to come out this year as well. J. Cole, The Fall Off. Snoop Dogg, Missionary, produced by Dr. Dre. The Roots, Endgame. Let's see if, uh, you know, those projects see the light of day. And um, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a few more surprises up the sleeve as far as hip-hop is concerned. Um, as far as myself is concerned, um, I have Brad Dimmick coming out February 10th, 2023. Um, followed by Ladies Room, the album. It should be out of, um, I say April or May-ish, about that time frame. You know, spring, beginning of summertime. Um, then we got 3-4 Action, which is myself and Dime Dollar, which will be coming probably midway through the summer, if not the end of summer. And um, I have Take It How You Wanna, which is the follow-up to The Difference. You know what I'm saying? Uh, named after my brother, Flames Wordsmith. So that's the music side. Now we got the film side, uh, Cutthroat Texas. It's a movie that'll be coming out this year, as well as um, I'm developing some movies right now. You know, one called In Search of Gas. Hopefully that should be out um, April 20, 2023. Um, I have a book called Days of Way Back. It should be out this year as well. Um, basically what I'm doing is I'm tackling all arenas of entertainment. Film, music, books, and uh, try to extend beyond that. You know, I'm trying to do a little bit of everything. You know what I'm saying? Have a little bit of everything under under my belt. You know what I'm saying? Being morbidly consistent in all things that I do. Um, filming a lot of music videos. February 10th, I have two music videos dropping. February 11th, I have another music video dropping. And February 12th, my birthday, I have another video dropping. So yeah, we're setting it up to be morbidly consistent, you know. And of course, still bringing you the, the podcast, Unpopular Honesty. It don't stop. Um, also, in addition, um, you will see the return of Flames Radio. In 2023. I'm very happy about that. Uh, Flames Radio was something that uh, I enjoyed. Um, it was named after my brother. It's just the, the rawest, realest radio show that you could ever listen to because it's, it's, it's brutally honest. But, you know what I'm saying? The music and that brutal honesty mixed together, it's nothing like it. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's something that's needed within hip hop because you don't have anybody being brutally honest anymore. With that being said, man, um, before I get up out of here, uh, a lot of people make uh, New Year's resolutions every year. Or they say things like, this is my year. I didn't really hear too much of that this year. And I guess people are abandoning the cliche um, things that people say every new year. I will say this, man. You know, um, it's not in what you say, it's what you do. It's a lot of people that say, that talk that good game, but don't really do too much. You know? So you can say whatever it is you want to say, but the truth is in the doing. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, 
I hope that everybody put their best foot forward this year. I hope that everybody get on their grind this year. I hope that everybody handles their business the way it's supposed to be handled this year. I hope that everybody achieves whatever goal it may be, whether that goal may be to make money or whether that goal may be to lose weight or maybe that goal is to find somebody to marry or maybe that goal is just to put out the best music they can. Whatever goal it is you have, I hope and pray that you achieve that goal this year. You know what I'm saying? Um, also, you know, like I say every year, we need to leave that whack music behind. Life is too short for bullshit music. We need to leave whack music in 2022 and let's get on to some real music, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm always push and advocate for, for real music to be heard, accepted, and felt worldwide. Shout out to those who love and support real music. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to those who have supported this platform. Shout out to everybody who has came on. We're not going to stop. This is the second season. We're not going anywhere. We're only going to remain what we have been. And that's real brutal honesty and real hip-hop music. You know what I'm saying? So... Until next time, my people, on behalf of the good people at One Man Records, I am Cornbread Capone. This is Unpopular Honesty, the home of brutal honesty and real hip-hop music. And until next time, man, peace and love, because that's what the world needs. Peace.